everybody. This is Pastor Brady Henderson of the Menorah Podcast. This is a ministry of Gaston's First Baptist Church where I am honored and privileged to serve as a senior pastor since 2021. And I'm here today with the co-host of our Menorah Podcast, Alan Ott. Hey guys, how we doing? So we got an interesting thing that we want to discuss with you today. Obviously today is Thursday, May the 16th, and uh, today is the 16th day of the month, and it is our 16th podcast here of our Menorah podcast. So we are 16 in, and so that is exciting. So I want to talk a little bit about today on something that is essential to a successful church, but is not necessarily always seen. So in last week's episode, we discussed the divine appointment and we talked about live streaming and media. Believe it or not, that's something people can see, right? I mean, they can get online, Yep. they can see it, they know, and trust me, they know when it's not working. Um, you know, God bless Randy and, and Adam Callahan, who uh, are the soundboard operators on any given service. And if the soundboard messes up, everybody turns around and looks at those two guys and uh, so anyway, so, so we know about that kind of thing, but I want to talk today on the subject called church administration. And so I have in front of me today um, a book that uh, I was actually given to me. A, it's called Church Administration Handbook, and Bruce P. Powers is the editor of it. And so each different section is written by somebody different. Um, but I just want to talk a little bit, go, uh, and, and you know, I'll, I'll touch on the book a little bit. Um, but it, it literally has a job description, and it has charts and all kind of different things for everything in a Southern Baptist church uh, or a church period. And so I think what's interesting, though, it is a little dated. Um, you know, things things have changed. Um, obviously, media is a lot bigger of a deal now than it used to be. Um, so this was the one that I have is from 1997. But it was originally published in 1960. So it's, it, and it says here, a, a revised and updated edition. So this is the updated edition here. Uh, but I just want to talk a little bit about this. And I do want to talk a little bit about uh, where um, my heart for administration came from and kind of tell you, you know, I believe that not all pastors are good at everything, but there are things that they can do well. And I know for me personally, my granddad, he was uh, the worship pastor at Fairview Baptist Church in Greer for over 30 years. But in addition to that, he was also the full-time, not just worship pastor, but pastor of administration. And I think there are so many things that go into that. And, um, you know, and I hope I'm not, I don't want anybody to hear me wrong here you know, I believe that is something the Lord has gifted me and would be administration. Now, I'm not the best administrator in the world, but I do try my best, you know, uh, especially since I had a business degree in college and some different things of that nature to try and add that component to my ministry. But there are some pastors that that's not their thing. They, they'd rather do pastoral care and preaching, let somebody else do administration. That's fine. I just think it's important for you to identify in yourself as a minister of the gospel what you can do and what you can't do. Does that make sense? Uh, not that you can't do it, but that you're not as good at it as somebody else would be. Right. People are gifted in different things. I believe it's important that administration is at least addressed oh, yeah. uh, to the extent that things happen that need to happen. People don't realize all the things that goes on in a church when say, one of its members are in an accident or hospitalized unexpectedly. Yeah, There's a whole protocol, so to speak. We notify the pastor and the deacon for that family, and uh, depending on circumstances, there may be other things that happen. So, Yeah, absolutely. And, and I mean, even on the business side of things, I mean, how many times do you and I talk a week uh, in, in just one week about, okay, we're going to take this out of that budget. We're going to take this out of that budget. Yep. I mean, that's all administration. For example, I know last Thursday we had the Family Matters Workshop. I, I bit out a little more I can chew, and what I mean by that is, you know, I, I enjoy preparing and teaching, you know, what it means to raise a godly family and all that, but the administration that goes with that, right? I, right. <laughs> I had to recruit Pest Chris to feed people. I had to recruit Hannah and Sherelle to do decorations. And I did the slides. And so all these different components that go into that. Right. And, and again, that goes back to, you know, so much happens that you don't really know happens. 
You come in to church when you walk in the door, the lights are on, the building's either cool or warm, depending on what it needs to be, and uh, there are supplies where you need them, and somebody has to do that. It just don't happen. That is also part of the administration. You have bulletins. Uh, you have prayer guides. Oh, yeah. All that kind of stuff. Yeah, very, very important. One thing that's on here, and if you want to purchase this book, I mean, you know, feel free to. Bruce P. Powers, Church Administration Handbook. On page 63, I, I think it's it's interesting. It talks about ministry meetings. And I think what a lot of people might not understand is that we do have a church staff. Uh, when I came, it was just Sherelle, and Margie Risch was the interim uh, administrative assistant. And so added Velvet. She's full-time. Uh, added Pastor Chris. He's full-time. And then you're our honorary volunteer staff member. So you're media and finance. And so obviously Velvet is our administrative assistant. So we have staff meetings every week. And Alan, I know about a few, uh, well, about a month ago now, I invited you to come be a part um, because you do so much. And even though you're not paid, I still view you as a staff member in the, in the way that you serve and in the way that you have information that is valuable to the rest of the staff, such as media, such as, cause you know, if something happens in the booth on Sunday morning, odds are, I might not know about it, right? right. Cause I'm in the pulpit. And so we, we can communicate that. And then also as the church treasurer, whenever we discuss budgets and things, that's always important to be able to have that information. So before I talk about how this book on page 63 discusses what staff meetings are to look like, they have a good model. And I, I, I try to follow that model um, as the administrator. And, that, and that's the thing a lot of our listeners might not realize, Alan, is yes, I'm the pastor. Yes, I'm the preacher. But I'm also the administrator of the staff. I, I'm to administer to staff and to lead them, to guide them, to direct them. Um, our personnel committee has been great. They allowed me to write uh, the job descriptions for Pastor Chris and Velvet and be a big part of bringing them here. So that was that was just wonderful that they saw that in me enough to say, yeah, we're going to trust him with this. Uh, but what do you think about our staff meetings? A lot of times you think it's just another meeting and it's something to take away the time that you have to prepare for something else. And and they can be that. The few that I've been to, there's things that it gave me the chance to voice. Things that happen in our stream because you don't really ever get to see that as it's happening. You can go back and watch it. But generally, if, if something is amiss with that, I like to tell you that. Um, I like for you to know it before you find it out, if that makes sense. But a staff meeting is a chance for me to say, hey, this is this could work a little better if. Yeah, yeah. As as our shepherd, our, our leader for this particular flock, I look to you for the spiritual direction of our church. And I guess it would be, you know, you would look for me for the media stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay, hey, so if you do it this way, it may be a little easier on you. When you get to sit down and, and talk about things like that, you know, I may say that to you, but Velvet may say, well, that would totally mess me up. You know, oh, yeah. If you do it this oh, yeah. way, and I'm like, okay, that makes sense. And then, then so, when we meet together, it's 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 kind of like the control room, right? The, right. You know, yeah. you get to see everything that's, you know, how what you're doing really ties in with everybody else's areas. Absolutely. And a church is a little different than oh, yeah. company or any any other job. On page 63 of the book, I, I do want to share their meeting management model. Uh, they have four steps of how a church staff meeting should go. Obviously, um, if a church is large and a church has an executive pastor, it's actually the executive pastor that would lead the staff meetings from what I've observed. just depends on the church. Some church, the senior pastor does it. Some church, the executive pastor does it. But in our in our context, I, I have the role of pastor, preacher, and executive pastor, I guess, or whatever, administration, and all of that. And so uh, the way that it figures this is it says the number one thing that the church pastor should lead in a staff meeting, no matter the size of the staff, is that there should be, number one, start out with evaluation. 
the number one thing we do is we have a time of devotion. It's very short. I lead a short devotion to our staff to encourage them in the ministry that we're doing. And then also we take up prayer requests and we pray for one another. And uh, that's also where we share prayer requests from the church. If you've ever filled out a Connect card and you've put a prayer request on that Connect card, we try to pray for that in the staff meeting. Not only does it make it on the prayer guide, but also the church staff has prayed over it. And so I think that's important uh, to know that. Uh, But Outside of that, this model says that a church staff meeting should start in evaluation. And that's what we do. Um, and see, I, I was doing that before I read this, but this, this is very helpful. So what I mean by evaluation is we go over the previous two services from that week. And if there were any events, for example, when we had the church picnic, we, we evaluated the church picnic. And I try to make notes on my piece of paper. I write out an order of meeting for every staff meeting. It's front and back. And I write notes on there so that I can go back and look at it and say, okay, this is how we did the church picnic last year. Here's what Sherelle said about it. Here's what Chris said about it. Here's what Alan said about it. And here's some things that we can implement better. And then contact Adam or whoever's leading that team, Eddie or whoever, and say, hey, these were the comments that our staff came up with last year. Let's do this this year. That kind of leadership, not bossing, but I I call it coaching. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be a boss or a dictator. I want to be a coach. I want to be a leader. I want to be somebody that you can come to and say, hey, I've got this idea, and and we can discuss it and see if if it'll work. So evaluation is a big part of the staff meeting. We go over church attendance. uh, We go over giving. We go over just pretty much everything that happened that previous week and what we can improve uh, through those services. Uh, Any comments on the evaluation side? None. So the second thing that this chart says on page 63 is it talks about creating. And I think that's that's really what I love to do as a person. I, I'm probably over overly creative. <laughs> um, I, I have some ideas that are just, wow, that's just too much. You know, for those that are listening, you know, I'll come into the office and say, Al, I got an idea. And he'll go, oh, boy, what are we doing now? What are we doing now? But, hey, we've, had, we've done some pretty cool stuff. We've done some great stuff. Uh, yes, we have. So, so, and it, it's always worked out. But the creating uh-huh. part in a staff meeting, to me, is creating the order of worship for the Wednesday service and Sunday morning. And I think that's important. And Pastor Chris handles the opening scripture and the welcome and the prayer. And by the way, that is really important because in what he does, he welcomes guests to our church. He prays over the tithes and offerings, goes over the connect card, and opens up the service with scripture reading. That's really important. I, I don't want people to just brush by that and think, oh, it's, he's just doing it so the pastor doesn't have, doesn't have to do it. He prepares that. That's something that he works on. And, uh, of course, our music, we uh, Sherelle usually plans and prays and preps over our music a month or two in advance. And so we go over that. She sends us a spreadsheet every month, and we go over that in the staff meeting. And we go over the order of service. And I remember in April when we had baptism, I totally forgot that I had scheduled baptism. And I came into staff meeting, I'm like, hey, y'all. Uh, we got baptism Sunday, <laughs> and uh, everybody rolled with the punches, and uh, it all went well. But that's that's the part that we do that's creating, I think, is is the order of service. And uh, I know that as the senior pastor, I'm ultimate, ultimately responsible for the order of the worship service, but I try to allow my staff to have as much say – uh, have a lot of say in their opinion to make sure their opinion's heard because they're going to see things differently than me and we can see things that we never would have seen before as we work together in that. Right. And well, so, if, you, you know, if you're going to dictate everything, there's no point in having those staff members. No point in having them. And so uh, one thing I love about our services is that, and I know some folks might not like this, but it, it has really helped transform my preaching. And I think you'll know what I'm saying here, Alan. Pastor Chris does the welcome and the prayer and the scripture. Sherelle handles the transitions and the music. I don't, the only time I get up is to preach and I handle the ending. And so that is really, I I love what you say, one monkey don't stop no show. And I think if you're going to have staff, you're going to pay staff, and they're going to be here during the week, you need to allow them to do stuff in the worship service. Mm-hmm. They need to have a part in that. And I think that's important. And so uh, it, it just eases my mind to be able to sit in the service and worship with my church family that I love so much while Sherelle's singing or Chris is praying or Lee Sanford singing 
or Helen King is up giving a moment in history, I can sit there with my wife and worship. And then when it's time to preach, I'll get up and preach. But I don't have to worry about what am I going to say during the welcome. You get that chance to prepare. That's right. Mentally. Spiritually. spiritually. Yes. And it, it, it really has helped me. And, and I, I love it. And see, we even started on Wednesdays with our staff kind of uh, moving things around. We, we have a rotation with the, with the prayer request. And, and so it's nice to be able to rotate that. Yep. And uh, I really think that's where it, well, and, and, and I do allow, I try to allow Chris to preach a good bit as well, uh, even when I'm here, so that I can hear the word preached. Uh, and Pastor Chris is a fully capable and exceptional expositor. And so uh, I think he does well with that. Uh, the third thing it says here is deciding. Um, that is what we do after we go over the services, planning the services. We go over events. We make decisions, um, do a lot of that. And then, of course, the last thing is implementing. The, the way we end our services, we go over the prayer guide. We go over um, who's in the hospital. Um, we kind of divvy up the visits between, really, between me, you, and Pastor mm-hmm. Chris is really kind of what we do. And uh, we kind of handle those for the week. And if we need to let any deacons know that we need some help, we get them involved in it. Or if one of their people's having surgery, all of those different kind of things. It kind of creates a cohesive environment uh, in which each of its members can worship and thrive and know. You, you know, that's one of the things that I that I see, I think about so often when people that may not come to church regularly yeah but do come to church when they're facing trials or tribulations that relationship of having like-minded people to support you Mm -hmm. and encourage you during those times you know if you're there once every six months those people are never going to learn to read you that's right and do life with you right and do life with you whereas other people that you spend time with they will immediately notice the countenance on your face. Hey, what's going on? What is there something I can help you with? Or you may have shared with them that you're going through a particularly tough time for whatever reason. You know, there's a number of things out there that that cause us uh, distress. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I think all the time about how God tells us he'll never forget forsake us. Or forget us, and how do people maintain without knowing that, without yeah. relying on that? How do they go through life? Yeah. yeah. I agree. I agree. All right. Well, we've talked a little bit about church administration today. Hopefully, you've got something out of it. And uh, if you have any questions about our podcast, we just want to encourage you to email the church office at fbcg003 at bellsouth.net, and our awesome administrative assistant will get those memos over to us and so uh, we can read those but thank you guys so much this has been episode 16 of the menorah podcast ministry the podcast that seeks to share light speak the light and send the light all throughout the airwaves of the internet through podcast ministry hope you have a great day guys we'll see you next week next week